for this, you crazy mother. Are we ready? Yeah. You want to bring us in? I'll bring us in. That's all right. Yeah. Welcome to the Cost of Goods Told podcast. What, you want to do a clap thing? No, no, not at all, but I want to make sure we mention Beavers first and Dukes first. Yeah, yeah. Like before I said, I got, one thing, I got one thing to say before we, before we oh, get I'm to sorry. that. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. So I, I do have one thing that I do need to get off my chest. Uh-oh. So, but, all right, I don't know how I'm going to cut that, but <laughs> just drink a beer, I may, you'll I may it just out. leave it in. <laughs> Welcome to the Cost of Goods Told podcast. My name's Connor. I'm a chef and media producer. I am joined, as always, by my co-producer, Darren Lafferty. Yeah, as always. As always. Hello. As much as I may not want that. But <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck with me now. <laughs> um, who's a veteran in the food service industry. We are joined by Will and Nicole Buckman of uh, Corkscrew Barbecue. Um, I did say that I had one thing that I needed to get off my chest. It's been bugging me for a little bit. Uh, Nicole, I owe you a huge apology. Um, I did not realize my wording at one point when I spoke to you. Um, and if listeners don't want to hear this long story or whatnot, the first time that I came to Corkscrew Barbecue, and I, uh, I may be making it a bigger deal than what it was, but I, I really did misspoke. Um, Sounds like it. The first time I came to Corkscrew Barbecue, uh, y'all were super nice. Let me come in, take all the pictures and everything. Then my dad and I sat down and we ate and everything like that. And at the end of it, you said, you know, how was everything? I said, it's absolutely wonderful. And Will's a fucking workhorse. Now, as a producer of a of show, I want to do a little bit more research. I have followed y'all's story and I did a little bit deeper dive. And yes, that statement, Will is a fucking workhorse is true. It is also incomplete and the fact that everything that you have done and i wanted to say this to you face to face it's the the statement should have been y'all are fucking workhorses and that is a more complete and a and a much truer statement um and it was ignorance and it was not seeing the whole thing or whatnot but i really did feel bad for a significant period as i as i kept watching y'all story when i came back with my wife and so forth Y'all are both fucking workhorses. So I just wanted that. That's been kind of eating at me a little bit. And I wanted to get that off my chest and apologize that I did not make the true correct statement. Um, yes, Will is, you know, working his tail end off, but there's a lot of stuff that goes unseen as well. Um, and especially to maintain the reputation that y'all have uh, takes a takes a team and, and you put in a shit ton of work. And again, I apologize for not recognizing that the first time around. So I didn't. I didn't take any offense to it. You are just like me because you can ask him. I do that all the time. I'm always like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to leave this down. I got to go talk to him. And they're always like, uh, let it go. Yeah, let it go. You were off the hook. Okay, I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have been forgiven. Uh, and thank you for the props because a Absolutely. lot of people do not recognize the work that Nicole puts in it. Um, we we're, we're both work uh, tremendously hard uh, to make corkscrew work still. Um, and, and people do fail to see that from time to time. So thank you. Of course, of course. Oh. <laughs> well, this podcast is brought to you by Duke's Premium Meats and also our partner Beavers for having us here. Thank you, Beavers. This is true. Yeah, is I think true. uh I think y'all actually had the chance to sit outside on the patio and enjoy a little so bit and, and yeah, get a little something to eat. So. Space. And, yes. and great food, great hospitality. This place is awesome. The server was fantastic. Everybody inside was fantastic. The restrooms were nice and clean. Yeah. Supporting people, as we know. Restrooms are clean. Why do you think Bucky's does so well? That's what we always talk about. It's not because the barbecue is good, I can promise you. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that. But the, the patio is fantastic out here. Yes, yeah, nice. They've done a good so job. Cool. Chef Arash has done a really good job. Absolutely. He's going to be missed here. You know, Definitely head will. over yeah. to Buffalo Bayou. Absolutely. Brew and, yeah. But the team has been awesome letting yeah. us have this space yeah. to, to have all of our guests, and we cannot say how blessed we are to Tim, have Tim, so. Arash, uh, Lisa, Jacob, all the servers, they take good care of us here at Beavers. Very nice. So check them out, 6025 Westheimer Road, right across from the Palm. Great spot. Absolutely. Very good. Awesome. Well, Welcome to the show. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that was a long intro. That yeah. was a very long intro. I apologize for and that. And Connor poured game, out his you know? soul yeah. <laughs> to Nicole. <laughs> now, okay, we're whole another level now. I there almost we go. cried. Take it. I almost cried. Mm. Well, I just, I felt bad, so I had to get off my chest. And on the biggest platform that I can at least apologize. Now I know why you wanted to bring so. us in. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah an apology. Exactly. It's always like, exactly. you bring us in. Okay. <laughs> 
Well, cool. Well, usually what we start off the podcast with is just like a quick TLDR or a summary or a recap of everything. I will say that there's two other podcasts out there that, you know, um, have a, a little bit more of that, that detail. So we can get as lengthy into it as you want, or we can summarize it quickly if you want, um, however you want to do it. But, um, you know, if you could just take us back to not necessarily... I mean, you could talk talk about like high school and so forth, where y'all met, and and that was kind of, I think, Will's first barbecue experience, or wherever y'all want to start. I wonder so. if Will had short hair back then. He did. I don't know. He yeah. did. He had no. He couldn't grow a beard. He <laughs> had bleach blonde hair. And uh, like Spicoli, like Spicoli, Spicoli, like with Vans on his head, like yes, banging his head. Yes, yeah, super skater. That's awesome. Um, I think the most he had was a blonde goatee that you could barely see. It was there. He was proud of it. <laughs> that was a late bloomer. <laughs> what are you going to do? He had well, big dimples, and I was like, yeah. You, I made it. You I dealt with it. Gray, yeah, so you dealt with it. That's right. You dealt with it. Well, see, I'm trying to grow this out so I could be Will's doppelganger, and people <laughs> may mistake me for it. So when I walk into a barbecue <laughs> joint, they're like, oh, is, is that Will? You know, yeah. So, But it's not. I mean, this has been growing a little there too long. There might be a slight and, height difference between you and yeah, Will. Right. Just slouch a little. Not, so. not quite Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito, but I mean, <laughs> along the same lines. <laughs> so let's talk about it. Let's talk, I mean, how did you guys meet? Um, you know, Nicole, we'll start with you. But so tell us where you're from, you know, where you grew up. I'm actually from New Caney, Texas. Are you really? Yeah. I was born in Cleveland Hospital. Okay. Yeah. Most people say Ohio, and I'm like, no, no Cleveland, no, Cleveland, Texas. Um, then we moved to Spring. Sold okay. Our property moved spring. Met his brother. We were just friends. Met forever. Will's brother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was Randy's little brother. And uh, <laughs> then Will grew up. And I was like, okay. <laughs> now we have something. So you lived and in spring how long, roughly? From third grade. Okay, so third grade. Okay, so early on, you guys moved yeah, early on to spring. We moved in spring, third grade. And. Uh, been there ever since. Ever since. Where did you go to school? Spring high school. Spring high school. Yeah. Did you go to college? I did not. That's okay. I did a little bit, but uh, it wasn't my thing. I'm more hands-on. That's cool. I'm hands-on. Yeah, yeah, Definitely yeah. both of us. We, we tried those kind of roads. And You're in the right business for hands-on. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we always did more hands-on stuff. It was it's just kind of more who we were. Yeah, you don't okay. have to have an education. you got to be willing to work. That's about it. Yeah. yeah you got to have some okay. common sense. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have a lot of that. Yeah. 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 That a lot. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. What about you, Will? Uh, where do you want me to start? Where did you grow up? Uh, in spring as well. Okay. Yeah, I was born in uh, in Las Cruces, New Mexico. All right. But as an infant, we were moved to uh, Spring, Texas, and I've pretty much been here my entire life. Oil and gas? I mean, your parents oil and gas or uh, military? Uh, or all kinds of stuff. I think okay. uh, my dad, when we first moved down here, he actually, I think, had a job at U-Haul. Uh, really? Okay. Which is, is why, but the economy was just much better, much stronger in Houston. Sure. Yeah, yeah. All the way around, you know, yeah. predominantly because of oil and gas, but uh, everything else was thriving at the time as well. So. Cool. Uh, yeah, grew up in Spring, went to Spring High School. Uh, Nicole a, was a grade older than I was, uh, but again, her and my brother were friends, and uh, uh, you know, she was blonde, and I was 15, and I was like, yeah, that chick's pretty cool. You're married, and, and then you're like, I'm, I'm going to date up. So I'm going to date up. It took like three years, but when we hit 18, it was like, yeah, all right, I'm listening. <laughs> So then, technically, y'all been together how long? Uh, Outside of marriage, twenty three years. Twenty three years. Congratulations! Yeah, thank wow. you. Good for you. Y'all been tolerating each other for a long time. Oh yeah. Eventually, her tolerating me. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you recognize that, or at least admit it. You know, we, we've got that on record now. No, no, twenty three years and having my accident. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say he tolerates me a lot too. Because I can be a lot. Well, well, there's a lot of hard work in twenty three years, there right? Is. I mean, you gotta admit, and I, look, I've only been married twelve years, uh, a but there's a. 23 years, you find each other's flaws, you deal with each other's flaws, you accept them, mm-hmm. whether you deal with them or not, you accept them. Yes. And then when you have children out of it, man, just, you double down. That's right. Yes. right. That's, we're all in. Yeah. Well, then open up a barbecue joint. So every and year then, married with, with a barbecue, barbecue joint, joint you multiply that by three. Three and five-year-old, you're like, hey, yeah, we should just open a barbecue restaurant. Because yeah. everyone can eat. Right. Yeah. Everybody, we did. We ate a lot of barbecue. Will, you can stand over the, the smoker for 12 hours, and then we'll all eat when you get done. That's right. right? Yeah. That's right. That's pretty much how it that's how it worked. We really didn't have any choice, you know. It was feast or famine when we opened, so uh, that's that's what we did a whole lot of. Yeah. Whatever's left at so the end be, of the day. That's before suffering. you guys came to this barbecue fruition, this idea, what were y'all doing? What, what industries were you in? 
I did uh, commercial leasing. Okay. And uh, more corporate housing. Okay. I loved it. Kind of managed the properties and that kind of thing, leased or did you lease it? Okay, yeah, leased a lot of, did a lot of corporate housing. Worked out here and then moved out into the woodlands. I loved it. I mean, absolutely loved it. And then we wanted to have kids. Was it the interaction with people that you loved, or was it the business super, that you loved? Okay, super fast pace, lots of people. <laughs> I love. That Which sounds crazy. about spot on for owning your own business. Yeah. Fast <laughs> pace, lots of action. And you're on your own a lot. So you yeah. were like independent. You were very independent and, and I love that. And then whenever we decided to have kids, we had to have them before we got married. Hmm. We did some things going on and I went back to work and did um, work for apartments and I, I loved it too. <laughs> yeah. And then I did stay at home mom. And that was oh, really? my most favorite job. So right. with the kids. Yes. Two kids. Two kids. Twelve and fourteen. Yeah, they were right? seventeen months apart, so wow. basically two babies. Okay. And that was, the, and I know it's so cliche to say, but it was tough. It was tough. I'm sure. Especially when you're career driven, it's hard to stay at home. Yeah. Because you feel like you have so much you want to go do. Yeah. But I, I could never give that up. Like no. that was the best thing that I was ever able to do, and he worked for at t in his very beginning and he didn't we didn't make a lot of money and it was definitely needed to be a two income household but he was like i cried when i thought about how to do daycare <laughs> when i was oh my son. you didn't want to let him go no okay and he was like well don't go back to work and i was like well, i have to and he was like no we'll figure it out and we did we did for five years that's cool at home with my kids and i was absolutely blessed to be able to do that i couldn't imagine have not been there for every single day just a little things, you know, get out for <laughs> breakfast with them and little stuff. Well, and I've, you know, I've met enough people along the way that, you know, some moms feel like they were born to be a mother. Absolutely. Or some women born Absolutely. to be a mother. Absolutely. And some women feel like they were born to be a career driven. Absolutely. Right? And there's nothing wrong with either, either one, one of them. One of them. I don't but judge either there's, one of them. There's just though. something about, though, a woman who was born and says, I need to be home with these kids. I right? did. I think it's awesome. My mom worked, and don't get me wrong, we weren't slighted at all, but yeah. she did it all. I mean, she cooked. She cleaned, she worked, she took care of us. Right. We never missed a thing, Absolutely. right? Um, but I guarantee you, she would have stayed home. If she had the opportunity to stay home, she, she would have too. And it was kind of getting to that point, you know, when they started to get to the point where Abby started kindergarten and Willie was in Mother's Day out four days a week, you know, I was getting to the point to where I was telling him, I need something to do. Like, yeah, I okay. want a job now, I'm ready. Like I, I did what I was supposed to do, getting them to school. And then I wanted, I was, I think I'm good having meeting with both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, my kids are obviously first for me, and you can ask him, even when it mm-hmm. comes to the restaurant, if my kids need or anything, school or anything like that, I'm like, sorry, babe, I got to go do this. Like, it's... Yeah. It's Will, cool. Will, do you, do, would you agree? I, so, the impression that I get is she's really good with organized chaos. Yeah. Would you agree she's good in that arena? <laughs> like she, yeah, yeah, she can handle it. Her hair is on fire, and she's like, nah, I'm cool. I'm yeah. good. <laughs> Myself <laughs> and the kids are the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's <laughs> yin and yang. It's yeah. all good. It is. Yeah. Good, good, good. They're, they're all super just chill. And I'm the one that's like. <laughs> yes. Tasmanian devil. Nice. You're running circles around yeah. everybody. They're all eating and I'm eating and cleaning and laundry and whatever else has to be done. And he's like, just make the kids to help you. And I'm like, oh, I like it. Like, I like it. <laughs> hey, pass me the remote. Get the kids to help. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I like constantly be doing yeah. stuff. No. I, get, I get kind of bored like the restaurant with just paperwork and stuff like that man you're in the I right industry she's in the right <laughs> the front i want to be in with what i did you know and i walk in and stuff is hard so yeah. i'm, I'm want to be out in the front i'm like babe i miss like being out there and running in chaos and, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> obviously as you can tell so let's talk about will and and what is so hey she mentioned at t but it's no. not like a nine to five no this is a no this is that's non-stop yeah you know what you were doing you know so it's not like you're coming home and it's i just got done out of desk you were you were some serious labor work out there. Yeah, it was, it was laborious. But yeah. it, I mean, that's that's kind of what I am. You know? Were you yes. f- out in the field, or were yeah. you okay, yeah, like absolutely. installs or? It yeah. was. It was. Uh, <laughs> we we're in what was called the construction department, so we dealt with all you know, like main trunk lines that that run in manholes down the down okay, the street okay. or up in the air on the poles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'd pull new cable, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. We were ma- mainly splicing cable. Uh, I, okay. 1800 pairs 2200 pairs you know sitting there in a manhole splicing this stuff mm-hmm. together sitting them down the road is that where they pull the back up the trailer kind of close to the hole put yep. a tent over it and then yeah. you're down in the stink yeah, just putting it it ventilates the manhole for you oh is that right it's also got a pump on it so they're all full of water so you pump the water down you ventilate it for x amount of minutes and then you can climb down there and start getting to work 
Well, sounds yummy. Yeah, yeah I was just saying. <laughs> some, some, of the, uh, some of the environment wasn't, as, wasn't fun. I bet. I would take that manhole any day over than a, than a pole in the blistering sun. Oh, standing uh, up on a pole, yeah, yeah. with all the red wasps and everything else up there with uh-huh. you. Uh, I would take that manhole any day. <laughs> any day. Did you ever invest in maybe one of those bee suits just no. to get up on the pole? No. You know, like, ah, oh, I'm good. I don't think it was OSHA approved. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you go from slicing wires, yeah. splicing wires, right, yeah. either underground or overhead or pulling wires, how do you go from that to to finding a love for smoking meat and then eventually, like, hey, you know what, I think I'm going to open up a restaurant. How's that happen? Yeah, so, you know, it started, I think, like a lot of other stories you've heard, it, it was a hobby. It was just something we okay. did in the driveway. It was an excuse to empty beer cans. Uh, <laughs> it was an excuse to, to stay outside and uh, in the elements and, and uh, uh, enjoy the outdoors with the family and the kids. Yeah. And then have, have a reward at the end and, and show them something like, oh, I made it for you, you know, yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. So that's really how it started. And, and uh, you know, as time went on, we would invite people over. They would try what we were doing out in the driveway. Uh, but we had a company lunch in where I took – some briskets to, to AT&T to nice. our, our, our yeah, party yeah. there. And uh, before long, you know, people started approaching us. Hey, can you smoke me a brisket? My daughter's birthday party is two weeks <laughs> from now. And little things like that started popping side up. Side money, yeah. And it, and it wasn't even side money. It was just something like, hell yeah, I'll do it. You know, I don't mind. They just buy the meat and do it. Yeah, I was yeah. Like, bring me a brisket. I'll oh, okay, okay. Oh, shit. You were going to be, be doing something anyway. Just yeah. bring it to me and I'll take yeah, care of it. Yeah, and that's the kind of guy who I am. Like, you need something from me, I'm going to say yes. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yes, no. I will help you no matter what. And and uh, she's the one that's like, you say yes too much. So <laughs> it was her, man. She, she was like, well, we're going to start charging people for this because we're out there all day, every day, even work nights now, you're out there smoking. And, and uh, uh, anyways, it, it, it was something that I loved to do, so yeah. I didn't mind doing it at all. Uh, it kind of annoyed her after a while, and I think she's the one that really saw the opportunity. Yeah. I shouldn't say annoyed her, because um, she knows I'm that way, but it, I think she's the one that really saw the initial opportunity and said, we can start charging people for this. Mm-hmm. We wanted we'll something else to do. We did want something else to we do. Did. We did want him out of 18. That was right okay. at that right time okay. also, where she, you know, the kids were a little bit older, and, and she was like, I want something to do Yeah. other than this. You know, the, they're... You know, starting kindergarten, I've got open hours of the day where I have nothing to do. The house is spotless all the time. There's nothing else, you know, there's nothing else to do. What else right. can I take on? I want to work. Um, so that was it. She started, a, she built a website, published it, built a menu, did costing. <laughs> Um, and, and printed them out and said, next time anybody at work says, I, I need a brisket or I need this, hand them this. That's and awesome. that's what I did, and, and orders started coming in. <laughs> nice. Uh, so I, I stayed up. I would stay up at night, and I would cook. And during the day, uh, she would finish ten in the fire for me in the mornings when I would leave to work. She would pull the meat off the pit, let it rest. She, uh, I taught her how to slice everything. Uh, she would stay home and make all the sauces, all the sides, wow. put it all together in a, in a pretty little package and deliver it while so, I was at work. Yeah, when you say she wanted something to do, you really meant she, she wanted something, something to do. I wanted something to do. I, I mean, I don't know if this was necessarily it, but this is what she did. <laughs> <laughs> this, is what she, this is what you handed her. You're like, hey, there you go. That's so, great, though. I mean, that's great. When you started smoking meat, though, let's talk about it from the beginning. Yeah. Like, So even Aaron Franklin will tell you in, yeah. his, new, in his new commercial. Hey man, the first brisket I made was horrible. Oh, we, right? But we had a great excuse for people to come over and drink beer. And so, yeah. how, you know, obviously you have to know your pit. You have to know your wood. You have to know the draw of the pit. You have to know the temperatures, humidity. Yeah. How'd you figure that out? I mean, uh, you were doing well, it on your yeah. own, but when you start to really ramp up, right, you're making a lot of briskets. How do you figure those things out? You know, it's just paying attention to what happens. You know, you make the smallest little change in, in, in one thing, yeah. and, and, it, and it just kind of spreads out. Towards the end of a cook, you're cooking for so long, so mm-hmm. you make a, a minuscule adjustment, and at the end of it, it's, it's, a, it's this big now. Okay. So it just kind of follows a traje- tra- trajectory, right. and, mm-hmm. and it can get out of hand. So you just follow that stuff and monitor it. Pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, that's what I did. Yeah. Uh, I burned a lot of food. I undercooked a lot of food. <laughs> uh, I, I, just, I, I had some food that came out so sooty and tasted just like a log of red oak. You know that. Oh, you like mean it's not supposed meat. to taste like that? No. <laughs> like, That's how we eat it at my house. Yeah. Yeah. Are you telling me I'm wrong? Yeah, you're right. it's awesome. No. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's that's what it was, you know. It was just trial and error over yeah. and over and over and over again, and then just starting to add things together and piece the puzzle uh, together. 
Uh, so you're smarter than I am and that you remembered it all or are you smart enough to write it all down I, sort I of document the process yeah, I don't think <laughs> okay it's we're just, on the same page yeah it's yeah. just you know it's caveman style man. It's, <laughs> man, manipulate it with your hands and, and and get a fire going and keeping it going and, yeah. and uh, that was it okay just paying attention just kind of right. tuning into it uh, becoming one with the fire and the meat and the smoke it. you know the intuition doesn't that ne- isn't ne- necessarily natural but it's something that can be learned. sure that's right uh, that's exactly right and and that's what i did i taught myself to have that barbecue intuition and, and when you say self-taught you really mean that and i think you're underselling it a little bit and the fact that a, a lot of chefs will take an apprenticeship or will work under somebody else y'all really didn't go out and eat too much barbecue y'all really didn't you know we didn't, we didn't do market stu- research we yeah. couldn't afford it and, 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 <laughs> funny enough like everything that we started cooking in the driveway I, I would make a joke we had a little mom and pop grocery store on the way home from work and i would stop in there and i'd shop the rock bread that's what i call it <laughs> okay. all the stuff on for grass us. the meat I got yeah, it. Us, not other people. Yeah, no, <laughs> before we started charging people, small disclaimer right, right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, whatever was on the on the rack that they were like, hey, we need to sell this today or it's going in the dumpster. That's what I was bringing home. <laughs> yeah. Marinate, yeah. that night. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, I, and I think listeners need to know that too, that I mean, I think one of the one of the things that resonated pardon me, with me in one of in one of the interviews, sorry, um, that you had was, I'm all good. That's okay. That's cool. you know, you're uh, I think you said like your first pit, you had to call and make sure that it was okay to, to get it. Or, you know, you had to, you had to set something aside for it. It wasn't like everything was kind of on a shoestring and, and you were doing it out of passion and a, and a shit ton of love, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I commend you a lot for that because other people, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't take it that far. And I'm, I'm so glad to see someone do that and get the level of success and i mean we'll get there for sure but you know our first, our first pit you know like like she said i was it was a single income family uh our first pit was in oklahoma joe's from academy it was the smallest one that you could buy it was a 199 dollar pit um and it was basically something i had to get on my hands and knees and beg nicole to let me buy it. Uh, because 199 dollars 200 dollars was 200 dollars you know that was we, then we were talking about, you know, we were able to go out to eat maybe every other Friday night mm-hmm. uh, on our budget. So to spend $200 of that, it was a, it was a big deal. She's like, well, I don't know, man. What, like, what are you doing? He's we don't need a pit right trust now. Me. Trust <laughs> me. And uh, it just kind of, you know, developed. That, that pit would cook one brisket at a time. Wow. I was going to say, I haven't seen brisket, like big briskets, at, I mean, big pits at Academy. No, you know they, what I mean? Like, had, that's they, why. They had, they had three different sizes. That yeah. I think the biggest one was like six ninety nine, and that was just way out there for us. So, and I think it might do, you know, three or four briskets, but yeah. There's a picture a, at the restaurant of it. It's yeah. A tiny one. Do you yeah. still have it? No, I don't. Okay. No, and my son bawled his eyes out. That, that was the process <laughs> of, of building the business. You know, every time, yeah, yeah. every time we would expand, I needed that cash. To, to put it towards the next step. The yeah, next we didn't level. spend any of the money that we made when we were still doing it out of the house on mm-hmm. anything other than the business. The Expanding. Business. Yeah. Invis- right. Investing back, back in, in, right? Back, back in. in and saving up to hopefully open something one day. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because we're just at that point where we need to transition from, and I want to hear more about you know the, the growth process, right? Because it sounds like, it, it sounds simple, right? So those listening sounds like, well, I was just doing briskets at home. And then all of a sudden people at work started asking for them. And then my wife had a menu and a website and we just started handing out flyers. And before you knew it, it sounds simple. Oh, it's a Disney movie. You yeah. know? <laughs> it sounds so easy. Why don't we do that? You know, let's do that this weekend. Oh, right. I wish it was easy. Multiple years in the making, which is super yeah. cool, but no one feels the pain like you guys felt the pain. Yeah. Even when you talk about a $199 pit, like you're it's like, ah, I don't know, man. Hey, it's, it's, we got we got lights to pay for. We got groceries. Yeah, you know, it's two little kids, but we also wanted a future for our two little kids. Of course, mm-hmm. of course. Well, so, so let's talk about that vision when we get back. We're gonna take a quick break. Okay. Give a shout out to um, to to Duke's Premium Meats, our sponsor, and uh, hang around because Will and Nicole are here from uh, Corkscrew Barbecue. We'll be right back. Duke's Premium Meats Home Delivery is your one-stop shop for premium quality meats delivered right to your doorstep, delivering all over the United States. Duke's Premium Meats offers you the best in quality by personally working closely with local ranchers and butchers. Duke's Premium Meats offers everything from fillets and lobster tails to heart-shaped ribeyes to Texas raised Wagyu brisket. Get amazing meat delivered right to your door by using Duke's Premium Meats. Visit their site at www.dukespremiummeats.com. Hey, welcome back to Cost of Goods Told, uh, part two. We're here at Beavers on Westheimer 6025. Thanks for having us. I'm here with uh, Chef Connor, 
and the Dynamic Duo 2, which is Nicole and Will <laughs> Buckman from Corkscrew Barbecue. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thanks for hanging out. We took a little break, and so welcome back. Um, you know, the first part we talked a little bit about who you are as individuals, how you sort of met, uh, that fate, that faithful day uh, that you guys uh, got to meet each other, and then ultimately how you came to fall in love with barbecue, essentially, that's my words, but you've embraced it to the point where you open up a business. Um, can we talk about <laughs> that day or that day leading up to, or you said, Hey, I, I think I want to turn this into a business. Cause I'm Nicole. I said, excuse me, Nicole, I know you had a lot to do with putting together the menu for friends and family and coworkers right. and how to order and, and what to do and how to make some money off of it. But when you decided to turn it into a business, create an LLC or an incorporated, um, how's that happen? And how, what's, you know, what's behind all that magic? If you will, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we saw uh, just to preface. We saw a lot of a lot of good things in the in the year that we spent working out of the house mm -hmm. and, and and starting to pick up corporate client clientele out of the house and and doing this stuff all under the radar, like underground barbecue for sure. Uh, and we saw something there where there was promise mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, and we were I was having a lot of issues at, at work at AT and T. Um, it just, you know, I came to the conclusion with their that, changes, not with himself. Yeah, I mean, right. I, it came, I came to the conclusion that that union life wasn't for me necessarily. Okay. You know, having somebody else was really at the helm of my career, my future, my someone in control of what you were going to be doing. That's Whether correct. Whether you got paid more or not, I mean, you, no matter how hard you worked, you still got okay. paid. You're good. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got paid the same as the guy who didn't work as hard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it was difficult. And, and having your job continuously dangled in your face, like this might not be here after this negotiation. Uh, your insurance might be gone. Whatever. Uh, the case may be it just it got so frustrating to us especially as independent uh of thinkers as we are it's like you know i think we could really do this on our own sure um and and you know we had a lot of family support a lot of our friends support um and and uh, my grandmother i mean she's really the one that helped us kick it off um, Actually, she, my dad did. Well, he, he helped too, but he it did. was... He bought us our first cooler so we could do catering. Yeah, we bought oh. our $177, and we yeah. couldn't do it. Really? So he got it for us. Yeah. It was huge for us. That's I think cool. my grandmother was the one like that That was... It really finally... She gave us the, the money, the startup capital, which was really awesome. I, I, we don't tell a lot of people that. Um but she gave us enough money to where I could actually quit my job and leave AT and T. It wasn't a lot of money. So let me. Ask, it was it was it was money, and it was what we needed to live for a month. So let me ask you this question: So your grandmother has this literally this vote of confidence, very much, Absolutely. right? Yeah. So was it the symbol the symbol of the money, or was it the symbolic that she believed in you she that you does. could? Right, right. It was it was the belief. It really yeah. was, and 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 like I said, everybody supported us, including my boss at AT and T, yeah. who, who told me, you know, look, man, you're one of the best guys I got. If mm. if you ever need this job back, you should call me. That's first. cool. I was terrified. Uh, so we had I would imagine plans, but we also knew that we were young enough, and if this was something that mm -hmm. that did not work out, we knew it was viable. But if it didn't yeah. work out for whatever reason, we were going to be able to bounce back from this. It wasn't the end of the world, and it was it was one of those things that you you hear people talk about. Uh, I've always regretted my entire life. I've always regretted that I didn't do this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we we talked about it and said, you know, we don't want to be those people. Yeah. At you least, know. you know, in 50, 60 years, uh, when we're telling great-grandchildren this story, we could tell them, you know what, though, we tried it. Mm -hmm. We did it. And, uh, you know, it just so happens that it, that it kind of worked for us. <laughs> <laughs> he said that so well, nonchalantly. Yeah, nonchalant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he, he told, he used all of his paid vacation, all of his sick time and everything at AT&T because he would take off yeah. sick day so we could do a catering I couldn't do by myself. My mom helped us. My mom catered with me. She would help me deliver. She helped me set everything up. We did big corporate client. We had oil and gas companies and everything. There, yeah. In Woodlands and all over the place, real estate companies that we catered to. And he came to me and said, I have two days left of sick days. Right. That's it. <laughs> For the rest of the year, and it was like in the summer. So we started. No, it wasn't even. It was March. 
it was still oh, so gosh. We had a whole <laughs> oh, so early in the year. So you knew yeah, you, yeah, you were out. I did four months. weeks of vacation, like uh, seven days of sick days. Already it was March. Was like, oh, <laughs> well, that's a good sign, though, because if you're using those to, to help build your barbecue business, right, then that's a good sign. Like, Absolutely. hey, we're, we're getting somewhere. We're but getting somewhere. but at the same time, you're running out of we had to make a decision. guaranteed money on that day. That was right? it. So yeah. they, we made the decision. And when it comes to AT&T, once you use your stuff, then you get write-ups if you take that days off. Okay. So uh, the last time we did it was he his boss told him, okay, well, we can do the write-up. You have to take, go ahead and just take the full five days. Because if you do a write-up, you have five days. It's one incident. One incident. Okay. Oh, okay. So you can take one day. If you're out of days, you can take one day and it's an incident. Or, or you can take up to five days and it's still the same yeah. incident. So, so if you're well, going yeah. to take the Hell time yeah. of... Um, do it. Do, yeah, do, do it all yeah. Day. If you're yeah. going to get a whipping, you might as well yeah, get a right. good one, right? <laughs> why, why are you robbing a convenience store? It's the same time as robbing a bank, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's one or the other. So uh, it was the last time and he said... All right, babe. You know you. We don't have anything left. It's we stop doing this, and I do AT and T. We stop A and T and we actually pursue this. Yeah. And uh, we did it. What year was that? Oh gosh, uh, uh, 20, 2010. Yeah. 2011. So two thousand ten was that in the March? Twenty eleven. We opened in. We opened the tr- the trailer up in twenty eleven. It was, so it's 2011. 2011. Yeah. So this was early on then in 2010 when you made the decision. Yeah. No, it was in 2000. No, we started in 2010. We made the decision. Yeah, in 2011. Okay. All right. And uh, I was like, well, I guess quit and we'll just do it. <laughs> you know. And of course, you know, we'd saved up. <laughs> this was before his grandmother gave us the money. We'd saved up to be able to live six months. Good. And that wasn't including the restaurant. The restaurant was just to be viable and self-sufficient, but to make no money off of it, we were okay right. for six months. And uh, he called me and he's like, I did it. I turned in my two weeks. And I was like, oh my God, no. And I was like, oh, no, 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 it was tough. We found an original spot, and two weeks before we were set to open, they pulled the plug and said, no, no oh, we can't man. do it. We decided against it, and it was in our right outside our neighborhood, and they said that we could do it, and then they came back and said, council said no. We were supposed to open in two weeks. And, of course, I bawled my eyes out talking to council, and they were like, nah, sorry, we don't care. And no, I begged her and begged her and begged her, the lady that said no, and she was like, I'm sorry. And I was like, "We, I don't know what we're supposed to do. And she was just like, no. Nah. And she didn't care. Uh, yeah. Eyes out, so we got the truck and we just started driving and looking. And we found the spot where we originally opened Corks Creek. Found the spot, talked to the guy that leased out that whole area, and uh, he said, Absolutely. We love to have y'all here. It used to be an old U Haul place and it was completely empty dirt property. And we were like, <laughs> This better than anything. Now, so, now, being that your dad worked for U Haul before, was this some sort of sign from God that that's what you needed to <laughs> be? Know, or? So. If you're if you're keeping your ear to the tracks, there was a lot of those little things. A lot. Yeah, a oh. lot of those things, and 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 whether it meant anything or not, I think the, all of those little things it uh, combined, you know, just made it that much more comfortable. Yeah, because mm-hmm. if if it just kind of felt like it was all intent. Sure, know? sure, sure. But you also have to give yourself a shit ton of credit too. And I think I, I talked to some people and I had, I had to have an honest conversation with myself too. And the fact that it was like, when I wanted to start the media company, it was like, I had a GoPro and my phone camera. And it was like, you know what, if I'm not gonna learn to start creating on that, I'm not gonna look, I'm not gonna learn any better than, you know, when we get the real camera or when we get the real mics or whatnot. It's like, you're doing it one f- brisket at a time doing a good job and and a freaking hundred and ninety dollar cooler or what have you you know and (laughs) he's freaking getting corporate gigs you know so it's like all right you're doing good work it's you know you're putting in the hours to, to, to hone your craft or whatnot. You're doing good stuff that people are recommending you. You're still doing a damn good job at work where your boss is saying, hey, if shit goes tits up, you can always come back. Or, I, I know I use that phrase. <laughs> that and shooting the shit. You know? <laughs> My daughter listens to the show, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, it says explicit. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I've taught her, I've, yeah, I've taught yeah, her worse, I've taught her worse <laughs> words than that, yeah, I promise. Yeah, <laughs> Restaurant life. 
Um, and and we've, we've, we've mentioned it too, that everybody has opportunities, I think, throughout their life to be lucky or to mm -hmm. have a coincidence or, or something like that. Yeah, position, it's, yeah. Have you done the work? Have you put yourself in the position to take advantage of it or to, you know, be ready for that moment? So, you know, yeah, you know, that U-Haul thing or, or whatnot, you know, there, there are things that are going to constantly come. But if you are not a person prepared for that, this isn't this isn't simple stuff you know we kind of joked about it like this isn't a disney fairy tale right. this is a lot of hard work to get that lucky an nba basketball player one rebound may go a certain direction but that dude has worked his tail end off to put him himself in the position to have that lucky bounce so that he can right. you know win an nba championship it's the same thing with business no, I, I think I, too i completely agree with you we did i mean i I don't want to like sugarcoat it like it was just like oh we got this and we did this and we did that we cried a lot i cried a lot <laughs> i mean there was yeah. a lot of um you know mishaps and figuring this out and not doing the best job that day and and working our asses off for it i'm not going to say we didn't because we did i mean he yeah. i worked all day with the kids and anything i could and worked all day putting any anything i could find that was free any way to list something free online any way to put ourselves i think the only advertising we've ever paid for was Woodlands Online. It was $199, and it was, again, one of the things like buying the pig. It was $199 that we didn't have. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was like, babe, this I think this would be really good because it's the Woodlands area. Yeah. And that's what we were trying to market to because we were small and we wanted this niche first. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, there's a lot. You know, I think that sometimes we do kind of uh, – shade that and you know not well, we want it. we want that on our podcast because we have a lot of people who are in the industry listening to this yeah, and it's like look dude grind you gotta grind you gotta no it's not no pretty substitute. no it's not fun not. The, everybody is going through some shit you're not alone in this and if anybody ever needs to reach out you're welcome to message Absolutely. me on cost of goods told anybody in the barbecue business I'm, I'm sure is open up to it um, but I just want people to know that it is not the movie Chef, where it's you not. know mm. nothing like that. No, it's you know? work. You, I like, I like to work compare it to the music industry. When a guy gets his first major contract, and he start they start playing him across the radio, across the the nation, mm -hmm. and people hear his music for the first time, and and it's like, oh, he's an overnight success. I've never heard of him. <laughs> they just credit the ten years of the nightclubs right. that he played and, right, right. and the free free stuff that he did, mm -hmm. and the open mic nights that he did to get to that point. Yeah. Uh, I always say, you know, we work really hard to make our job look easy. Yeah. yeah. And it, that's what it's all about. But yeah, there's, man, countless hours went into this. It sure. wasn't just, you know, we had a lot of luck. A lot of luck was involved, but there's a lot of hard work. A lot of blood, sweat, tears. I, and I would say from all of the guests that we have, there is luck involved, right? And it's there's the it. opportunity that you position yourself, just like you said. Mm -hmm. But I think the hard work, the tears, the laughter, the the losses far outweigh, right? The luck, Absolutely. right? That, that comes along. Time. But but if you're not in the game, if you're not suited up, you're not you're not ready to go you in the game. So you, you guys have been suited up, that right? Mm -hmm. Still reach out and grab it, you know. You gotta be in the church. There's opportunities you gotta are know. there. So now that you guys are getting the accolades and the recognition and on the list, right? Let's talk about some of those. Like, mm -hmm. and none none are more important than the others, right? right? They're all the reward, They're all, They're all the reward hard. for all the hard work you guys That's have been putting in. Right. So how do you how do you guys receive those? How does that hit you? Like, how do you digest it and how do you accept it? And you just go, it is what it is. Let's just keep on going. Or, hey, we're good. We're going to stay right where we are. We're going to keep in this lane. You know what I mean? Well, we, we've definitely found our lane, I think. You know, and, and there's there's so much more that, that other other places are doing, which is fantastic. The innovation that's coming out today mm -hmm. is, is absolutely fantastic. And we've actually, you know, decided that you, this is corkscrew. We've always tried to stay grounded and in tune with it. What made us successful? What got us to the point to where we are today? And we just keep riding that. Right. We focus in on, <laughs> on where it is. We've got bumpers on each side, and, and we we stay within it. <laughs> um, that's no, that, and that's, that's very huge. clear on yeah. your website too, <laughs> which I think you probably designed. Which is, when are you guys gonna not run out of risk? You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, some of the questions are common. And these are, you know, I had a guy that emailed me a few months ago, maybe a month ago, and he just chewed my ass, saying <laughs> that our website was abrasive and rude and. All this stuff and I was like I went so I went on to our website and I started reading it and those the our FAQ where it says read me yeah are literally 
the questions that we were consistently asked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I picked those, because those are the most sure. constant ones, yeah. is so people know what it is. Yeah. So people, these are the main questions. And so I don't want them to have to feel like they have to email me. They don't they have to wait on an answer. They can get yeah. on there and get their answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can get on there and go, well, when do they sell out? Right. You know, and it says on there, yes, I yeah. know it says, People will post, you know, uh, reviews and they'll say, well, they sell out at noon. And that's just not true. <laughs> you know, I want, I want customers to understand they drive in. It's not going to be noon when we sell out. Sure. You know, sure. 3 30, 4 o'clock. So it says on there, these yeah. are, these are like times that are the most estimated times. Mm. So I want, I, I put those questions on there and I emailed the guy back and asked him, you know, well, what did you, so I could know, right. yeah. I could go back and look because I'm seeing it from different eyes than he does. That's right, right, that's right. And of course he never answered me back. Of course not, <laughs> it was to too logical, was too logical. Right. Because mm -hmm. I read over it, I had our manager read over it, I had a, one of our other employees that, you know, are at the front read over it and they were like, I, I don't. Really I think it's, I think it's very straightforward, and but not abrasive. It's and I think it is, um, you know, it's very logical. It's like, look, we cook product, Right. To our pit's capacity and to the mental capacity of the pit master. And that's mm -hmm. I mean, you can't get more family owned and operated than that. And that is what drives the barbecue business to become, to be in the lane of craft barbecue, you have to do it really well. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean being open till midnight with right. no, with, without running out of product. That's that means right. making the best possible product he can. I need him around. <laughs> he's not just a pit master. So see, that guy doesn't care. That guy says, I want I want brisket I or that, whatever, right? I had a customer a few weeks ago that told me, why don't y'all open all night long? And I was like, well, I mean, this is just how we do it, blah, blah, blah. And we were talking and he was like, well, it doesn't make sense. You should open on, sun on Sunday. You're losing so much money. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, well, Sunday's my family day. It's the only day we spend every si second with our kids. Sure. Yeah. And he goes, okay. <sighs> yeah. Hey, well, and I was floored by it because I was like, well, my kids are the, they're the most important people to us. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I need to know that when they grow up, they know that we had one day that was theirs. Sure. Right. And it wasn't about money. It was about our children and their livelihood and knowing their parents outside of just the restaurant. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, his friend who was a customer of ours since the very beginning of the trailer emailed me and apologized yeah. and was like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, I take no offense to it. Do you, I mean, it's not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> right. Money on the table. Right. But I think what people don't understand is maybe we are but we're comfortable and our kids are happy. Yeah. Yeah. And our kids get to be with us at night and we get to pick our kids up from school and yep. we get to do these things that what we wanted to be able to do still helps keep balance. Absolutely. Cuz yeah. we we all know, all all of us know how crazy the restaurant business is. It, is. it does get crazy and I think that's how we handle those accolades. Is it, you know we're we're of course very fortunate that we're recognized Absolutely. for what we do. Yep. Um but at the same time we don't we don't focus too much on those either. Sure. Um, we don't we don't put a huge emphasis on on uh, you know chasing Yelp reviews and and following social media mm -hmm. and what people are talking about us and or what they're saying about us. Mm -hmm. uh, we focus on the product. Yeah. We focus on our employees and we focus on ourselves. That's cool. That's, That's, That's huge because cool. for every one person who's coming forward and being like, oh, you should be open on Sunday, there's other people I know in the business saying, well, shoot, if they can do it and they can be closed on Sunday and I can freaking have a life or, you know, like I can have that time with the children, that's okay. It's, it's huge, you know, and it, and it gives it gives them you know kind, kind of that that idea like hey you know what i don't have to be i mean y'all work a ton you know don't don't get it wrong but i don't have to be giving up that that thing that's so important to me it's you know? probably already 80 hour a week about 80 hours close to it yeah a lot of a lot of weeks it is yeah so when someone says well what's another sunday well that, that's that's now we're at 96 hours yeah. instead of 80 right so sundays as well you know yeah yeah of course with all, the, with all the festivals and the throwdowns and everything else that we do around barbecue this barbecue centric uh those sundays often we we often found taken Jeez. Uh, so we yeah. try to put the brakes on that too right yeah. a lot of people uh Sometimes the phone calls stop because a lot of the answers are no. Yeah. People call us and say, can you come out here and do this? Can you do that? You travel to this city and, and, and do your thing. It's like, I'm sorry, no. Yeah. We yeah. just can't. Good for you. We just can't. That's good. That's good. I also think it's kind of interesting. So like y'all said, 2011 was when the truck came out. I think y'all's 
Allison Cook's first write-up was 2012 yeah. or around that time, and then Texas Monthly was 2013. So not I, I think that, I, I, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also think that there's there's a history of craft barbecue, and it's interesting that y'all run into the same things that Blood Brothers run into. That you know, even Greg Gatlin runs into where it's like, look. You you were waiting in a line, but if you sat down at a restaurant, same and you, it's same same if time. You put your name down. I've said that for years. Yeah. If you go to a restaurant, which ninety percent of them you do, especially when it's a busy time, right? If you put your name down on a list. <laughs> you get a flashing thing, and you wait forty five minutes to an hour for a table. You're doing the same thing. Yeah. What I grasp is you're standing there. So it makes a big difference to customers. Yeah, right. So I think that's why our biggest thing is customers. My employees, I tell them all the time, drinks, make sure they have water. Make they sure are they awesome beers, at that, sure by the way. Make sure they have chips. Yeah. If their kids need a coloring page, yeah. if, you know, get them something. Tell them that they're Occupy their time. and let yeah. the husband sure. or the wife wait in line. Like, they don't have to be all Make that as line. comfortable as they can. They, these people don't have to stand in line. Right. They don't have to wait for us to serve them. They don't have to wait for the, the customers in front of them mm -hmm. to order food. They chose to. Um, they chose to bring their hard-earned money and yeah. trade it for our goods. Yeah. Uh, it's the least we can do. Yeah. We're, we're, we, we love them to death, all of our customers. We love them. You're standing in our line, your family now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, we put ourselves as a customer oh, rather that. than go, go ahead go ahead oh, we put ourselves i think really from the very beginning as customers because we always love to eat out you know and stuff like that yeah. so i think we started out going we're gonna look at it us as customers rather than owners yeah so we try to focus on what would i want if we're sitting out there we put a sandbox outside for the kids because we knew what it was like when we had little kids we were at Willie's yeah all the you time. always yeah that's, right. that's exactly right willie's that's right and we could go have a beer sit out know, on the patio and, and let the kids get enjoy dirty yeah. and eat and and, call, and like have a conversation but our kids would be there playing in the sandbox and like enjoying that time and not feel rushed by just sitting in a box. Well, and I like too that you guys allow pets to come, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Outdoors, Absolutely. unless it's a service pet and then they're allowed indoors. I mean, I like, it's so family centric, right? And it's built around your own principles and your own uh, priorities yes. that anyone can come and anyone can hang out. Yeah, it's gonna be hot four months out of the year, yeah. right? But the rest of the time, it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be reasonable, right? To come out and hang out and yeah. have fun. Right. So. I think it's pretty cool. I, I also really enjoyed what you just said, Will, which was people come, they want to trade yeah. for our goods. Sort of fits your whole caveman look and all, but <laughs> it's just really it's cool to tax, think. It's, <laughs> it's really cool to think of the, the nuts and bolts of a business, which is people work really hard and spend their money wherever they want, right. but they're coming to us. Absolutely. So what do we need to do to make them be comfortable mm -hmm. besides everything else we've already done, given 80 hours in a week, mm -hmm. Right to prepare smoked meats and sides and desserts, which I hear is really good. <laughs> um, but but the environment itself, mm -hmm. from the dog to the kids to the parents, bring it, and I love it. That's really cool, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you, you understand people too, and it, and if they're mad when they get to your establishment, they're <laughs> mad when they get to your cash register. You're not going to be able to. Those people. I don't care. <laughs> you're right. You're right. What kind of barbecue I'm serving these yeah, people? Right. Uh, if I pulled the brisket from a cloud and served it to them, <laughs> it, it wouldn't matter if they're mad already. Yeah. Um, so you know, and and that's how Nicole and I operate. We like to remain calm and be chill. You know, and and we want our customers to feel the same. Because it is an experience, right? People create an emotional connection to food right. and emotional connection that's to right. their experience at the restaurant. Right. So mm -hmm. the fact that you've dialed in on that already is phenomenal. Good, good for you. you. You're going to continue to be successful, in my opinion. Thank so you. I think so, and I think and I don't know anything, but it, you know, <laughs> I, feel, I feel better saying it. <laughs> I believe in you. Uh, thank you. I think I think the uh, consumer also, you know, customers, you know, who are new to the craft barbecue world or whatnot, also need to learn a little bit about that culture as well. Yes, guys will sell out at three o'clock. Yes, we're going to try and post on Instagram or, or let you know or kind of give you the heads up and stuff like that. But it's almost like I, I want to get with each and every one of the barbecue mm -hmm. establishments that we've talked to and put a Ten Commandments list together and just kind of like. Hey, there is no holding tables. Hey, there is no this. You know, this is just kind of the, the barbecue <laughs> etiquette. Without it, we'll see. Yeah, see, if we do it, go ahead, yell at me. I don't give a 
down. You you can turn off my podcast or whatever. That's fine. There's plenty of other people to replace yourself. Hey, I know, right? <laughs> Cost of goods, go f- yourself. You know. <laughs> Sorry, your daughter's still listening now, man. <laughs> um, but but I think I think that. Be- because of the quality standard that y'all set and it's just like any special that you know runs in a restaurant or whatnot if i order it and you're out good that means that you didn't over order that doesn't mean that it's leftover crap that you're trying to dump or make whatnot. it chilly the next day you know and and also good on y'all for being able to put that balance together i think any anybody would want that for themselves it's like why wouldn't you want that for for the business owners as well especially people who are doing and we worked for it you know it didn't start yeah. out that way you know we we put in the time to be able to only work 80 hours a week. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. 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 Um, it, it, <laughs> I, it's, 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 yeah, I know. I know right. Okay. <laughs> okay. But you know, you work really hard to not have to work as hard. Right. And, um, even though it's still way more hours, especially for him, than what most people do, it's way less than it was in the trailer. So, <laughs> Well, and I would yeah. imagine as you have gone through the years, you've you've somehow figured out also how to work smarter yeah. and not harder, mm-hmm. right? Find efficiencies. What can we do differently? Right. How do we capitalize on this and that? Do you find that even it, you know, as, as young as your company is still, do you find that you still love it? Of course. I mean, do you, or do you wake up sometimes and go, man, I, 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 I can go back to AT&T. You know, there, <laughs> Nicole says no, and Will's like, um, no. Maybe not at t but there, I think there's days for everybody. I don't care who you are, yeah. or where you're like, you know, so, sometimes it just seems like it'd be easier to draw a paycheck. Sure. Uh, rather than do this. Uh, mm. There's so many moving parts to what we do, and we have to be focused into all of them. And, yep. and, it, and some days it seems impossible. Um, the good part is, is that those days pass. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, you wake up the next morning in the in the sun shining and the birds are chirping mm-hmm. and, and you're ready to go again. You're you're rejuvenated and and back in the game. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's days, of course. And the good day, the good thing though is is somehow, thank you God, we <laughs> have always been opposite. Yeah, we never so, landed on those days at the same oh, time. Oh wow. Yeah, okay. So that's good. Days, I'm I'm talk her off Ying and land. Yang. See, that's what I'm saying. It's Ying and yeah. Yang. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. I'll come in, ball of my eyes out. I can't do this. I'm tired. I, yeah. I, it's stressful. There's too much going on. You know. So y'all follow us on Instagram because if that day ever hits, it'll be for sale. <laughs> <laughs> then we know. Then we know. Uh, yes. how, how are you feeling so today? Are you doing yeah. okay? Hey, you wait a day, man. Just put a big sign out there that says "Taking a break." <laughs> <laughs> right, done. Yeah. See you soon. You don't have to put a timeline on it. Just yeah, you know. Right. You know, we do every year. We close at Christmas, and I know we everybody's learned by now that that's just what we And do. you're taking a vacation coming soon August. too, right? We yeah, do, I saw that. Done it Summer since, with, since we opened. We made a Good. decision that we take we, 2 weeks of vacation a year. For nice. Our, and our kids need it. I yeah, of I'm course. Not miss you Christmas. need it. Y'all I'm need not it. Gonna miss New Year's Eve and mm-hmm. I'm not going to miss those things with Good. our kids. It's yeah. just not going to happen. We don't do that's it. That's cool. And then our kids need us for a week during the summer. They of need course. our undivided attention when they're out of school that we can go somewhere and do something with them. And um it's very few and far between that we get customers. We do get a few that are new people and they'll email us during those vacations and, you know, chew us a new one on how, you know, it's rude that we were closed and blah, blah, blah. But what I want, <laughs> I want those people to understand is as much. Just so understanding like you, of them. Well, just like you at your job and you get your two weeks vacation, we deserve the same. Yeah. yeah. And as you take your family on vacation, our kids deserve the same. And um, we don't make apologies for it. Yeah. You know, I email those people back and I tell them exactly that. You take your two weeks, I take mine. Yeah. Uh, I don't get paid for mine. You do. Tell, you, should, you should get their email address and say, hey, when you go on vacation, I'm going to email you. I'm going to email you and you can ask for it. But it's kind of one of those things. You know, it, you have to do these things. I, I love the fact that there's such clear perspective on we're going to work our asses yeah. all for 50 weeks. And then for two weeks, we're going to relax yes. because we need it. Our kids need it. Our family. I love that. Yeah. And that's, you know, there's, there's, there's some businesses that, that I think lose sight of that. Right. Um, in terms of a chain, this is why I love mom and pops right. because in terms of chains, I love Chick-fil-A because yes. Chick-fil-A has stood their ground on their belief system on what days are going to be closed. Yeah. And they've, they've suffered, they've suffered the backlash from the public 
but they haven't suffered it internally. No. no. Yeah, we're good. No, no, no. We're good. <laughs> oh, you want you want to trade uh, nuggets? Pick them up on Saturday and throw them in the oven. I mean, you right. know, there's, so there's a way around everything is my point. Right. So good for you for laying, whether you wrote it down or you didn't, you said this is what's going to happen. Yeah. And this is what we're going to do. So congratulations for that. Thank you. Super cool. I think I, I admire you guys for that. for us, like during August when we are closed, you know, we our kids – we get a lot of time together, but we also, Will and I also sit down a lot those weeks and kind of refresh on <laughs> what new things we want to do. Cause you kind of clear your head you after a couple storm. of days. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, there was one summer, I think it was like two, two or three summers ago. We were, we went, took our kids to uh, universal studios and I kept telling you normally, you know, during that week, I'm like, Oh yeah, I got this, I had this new idea. And that week I was just stunned. Like there was <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Like I told him, I was like, I just don't have, I got, I got nothing. But there's there's I, nothing Universal Studios you want to serve people though. I don't think. No, <laughs> no okay. Mickey Mouse ears. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I was talking about with the restaurant. I usually have these big ideas of new stuff. When I come in, I'm gonna change this and change I got that. You. And I had nothing. And I told him, I was like, I lost it. I got nothing. <laughs> I don't have any new ideas. He's like, maybe you're just tired. You just like, yeah. Don't want to think about it for this week. Right. You're in your and, nothing box. Yeah, and when I came home, I was like, okay, I didn't think about it for the week, and I have new stuff, new mm-hmm. ideas. Right. And uh, it takes those time, that time off. You know, I went out for surgery in January, and I I had my computer and all my papers and everything at home with me when I went at the Shocker. restaurant. But I was working. I came. I mean, I had our contractor at the house to, going over paperwork with me on new buildouts for the restaurant. I mean, I was. He was like, "What are you doing? You're supposed to be relaxing and recovering from surgery." I was like, "No, I got blame. Big idea. Like, We're building this. We're doing this." And he was like, "I went ahead and let let some guys go. You know, like, no, nope, I'm done. I've been watching Chef Ramsay all week. I watched Kitchen Nightmares. From, I was dreaming Kitchen Nightmares. Went in, let some guys go. It's like, no, I'm done dealing with y'all. I've let y'all go long enough." And I was like, "I am Ramsay in this shit right now." Man, will like, I took that week off and it was like a huge revamp. And you know, you need that time off. So I think our customers should actually look at it as us getting better sitting back yeah. thinking about things that we can't think mm-hmm. about when the restaurant's opening and are open and and we're starting new stuff we mm-hmm. want to rebuild new stuff and and talk about new recipes yeah and yeah stuff yeah like that and i know we don't do a lot of that um mostly because we're just really freaking busy yeah and we don't have enough staff to allow us to get outside of anything other than paperwork customer service right. and the actual things that we do right now yeah um i think if we had a bigger staff we're extremely picky so we That's keep good. a small staff until we just find the right person yeah. that falls from this guy somehow and um <laughs> we hope you know we get more people and we'll be able to do more things but right now we're we're happy with just making sure like he said that we give them a hundred percent for the money that they go out and bust their asses for every day. Yeah. You know, they do the same thing we do. People go out there and bust their ass, get a paycheck, come to our restaurant and want to buy our food. We want them to get exactly what they're asking for. Because yeah. it's, it's hard these days. Of course. So I think three huge takeaways that I, I got from that conversation I was... No, no, it's perfect though. It's perfect because... Only three. Yeah, no, I know. But the, the three key ones. One, I think it was one of those where I think people have reached out or asked about like oh how do i inspire myself every day or whatnot there are some days you don't want to go to f-ing work you know and i yeah like, you know but you get up you do it you grind it out and then tomorrow will be a better day i think that right. that's kind of like what you were talking about two you also do have to find that time to decompress and give yourself a break from it because you can get where you got those horse blinders on where you're just running the track and you haven't seen anything left or right of you and so when you do have the chance to, to, to break those off, you can actually think, you can clear your mind and so forth, you know? And um, I just think that the, that, that is key uh, key element to it. The third part that I think from even part one is y'all have let everything kind of grown organically and have moved organically where it's not, hey, we're gonna go from house to big old million dollar investment restaurant or hey we're gonna do you know, get the next thing each additional thing has been because there has either been the the solid demand for it or hey you know what we we can do this now your comfort you know? zone, yeah yeah exactly you know but the foundations that y'all have set each step of the way has been so freaking solid um and that comes with 
ridiculous amount of work, a ridiculous amount of passion, a ridiculous, you know, attention to detail and so forth. Because we were talking about operations and so forth. I think one of the things, like even Chef Ara's restaurant, um, Harlem Road Barbecue, the way he's designed it, you could walk in there and not notice that the, the, the words don't echo off of the walls, you know? You don't notice it until you notice it. Distance you know. from each other. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The and lighting is all strategically placed. And same thing with corkscrew. You know, I think one of the first conversations we had was when you when y'all took an order. I was like, oh, this is just like a fancy restaurant. Like this is your pass, right? And I was thinking maybe his first experience was in a really fine dining restaurant because it looked like that. Everything was clean to the T. Things were set up. Even the plating. You know, it was like it's not plated. You know, like oh, well, your barbecue sauce comes with a smear, you know, or whatnot. But it's plated nice that it's like hey look those little attentions to detail can go 100% unnoticed but when it's not done right people sense it a little bit but when it's done and executed that way I mean people just come back and come back to it because it is a wonderful experience each and every time and that's something that y'all have held consistently for a long time so thank you so much for noticing <laughs> so that's part two <laughs> that was a great part two. Yeah, part yeah. one was fantastic as well. So and I'm so I'm glad to see this is where we're coming, right? So we're getting to know your past. Here's kind of where you are. What we're going to talk about in part three is where the future is, mm -hmm. right? Without giving well, without giving away too much, you know, the crystal ball. Nicole's instantly no nervous. Case. Nicole's like, I need a break. I need a break. <laughs> so stick around for part three with uh, Nicole and Will from Corkscrew Barbecue, and we'll be right back. Awesome. Duke's Premium Meats Home Delivery is your one-stop shop for premium quality meats delivered right to your doorstep. Delivering all over the United States, Duke's Premium Meats offers you the best in quality by personally working closely with local ranchers and butchers. Duke's Premium Meats offers everything from fillets and lobster tails to heart-shaped ribeyes to Texas raised Wagyu brisket. Get amazing meat delivered right to your door by using Duke's Premium Meats. Visit their site at www dot dukes premium meats dot com welcome back to the cost of goods told podcast we're now in part three with the dynamic duo behind corkscrew barbecue bam parts one and two we've kind of journeyed up into the opening of the restaurant and you know kind of the establishment that y'all are i know that we do want to talk about the future and everything along those lines um for sure um a couple things that uh i know that i definitely wanted to talk about um is the the day-to-day -day kind of operations that y'all go through um from an outsider view looking in at the first time that i saw y'all um will you are working your tail end off on on that meat um i think from my understanding is that there's not a piece of meat on that pit or that comes out that you haven't touched that's, right. that's to me um an insane way to work not be not from the sense of like you're, you're crazy but from the sense of <laughs> That means every single day, whether you're not feeling well or, you know, whatever's going on in, in day to day life, you are there to make sure that there is some high quality stuff coming out of uh, out of that establishment. Uh, Nicole, I know that you do a lot of the other operational stuff. You do a lot of the front end stuff. You do uh, either the sides. Uh, I don't make the sides anymore. Right. All the recipes are mine. They're all original. Right. I've made them all but i don't do them anymore i have passed on that but do you <laughs> test them before they I taste them every single there you, okay there you My go guys they, they sit there and they watch me with this look and then i'm like okay we're good or i'm like it's too salty or let's do this or let's do that you know and they're they're johnny on spot they fix yeah. everything every yeah. single time but yeah i taste everything i taste the meats every day i'm the official taste tester and i am not sad about it <laughs> i don't i wouldn't be either uh, he asked me all the time, hey, babe, he'll run in the office. He's like, try this. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's right. I'm like, it, it tastes great. I'm happy with it. Like, what? Are you, what? <laughs> like, take, bring me some more. <laughs> Can I have a plate of that, please? Plate of that, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also have a, a pretty good uh, core team, I think. Yeah, you know, I think yes. every time that I've come in there, w one thing is to be consistent from your side of it, but to be consistent on the other side uh, takes an immense amount of teamwork. Uh, we talked about how you have a guy, even in the long lines, you know, like coming out, making sure everybody's okay. Um, every single time that I've waited, they've done a great job. Um, I know y'all have seen me come up and order it and so forth, but I've watched other plates go out. I've watched them operate with other people. Not saying that I'm anything special, but like I like to make sure that like, hey, I know he's going to post it on Instagram and it's going to get shared and da-da-da-da. But it matches 
my plate matches, my ribs match, everything that I'm getting matches mm-hmm. what everybody else is getting. And that's incredible that, you know, your, your, your best plate to, even if it's a Texas Monthly type of guy, somebody else is going to match that. We you know? take great pride in the fact that, that we stand behind our product. Absolutely. I, I never have and I never will. What is on my board when a ticket comes in is what is getting sliced. That's it. I'm yeah. not digging in the warmer for the best cut because I saw the name on the ticket or I see you standing there at the at the counter ordering food. The brisket that I have on my board, there's only one open at a time. <laughs> there's only one unwrapped at a time. Same with the racks of ribs. Everything else that you order, what's on the board, that's what's going on your plate. If I don't like, if it's not good enough for you, it's not good enough for any of my other customers. Right. If I'm not happy with that brisket, it's going in the trash can. Mm. That's it. Period. Yeah. We've done that from day one from the trailer. We made that we made that commitment from day one. It, well, I would rather lose money than lose face. And so that's, that's that's an immensely difficult decision to make as an is. operator. Yeah. It's, it's more important. I mean, everybody is important. It, it, I mean, from people who write up on us to any anybody, our customers are just as important. Their money is just as important sure. to them as to anybody else, and we don't want to ever make our customers feel like because somebody writes about us or something that they're going to automatically be important. These are the people who come in our door every day who leave lunch from work to come drive over to eat lunch at our restaurant and wait in line. That's important to us. We want them to be just as important as anybody else. They're going to talk to tons of people. One person is a hundred people. Right. Yeah. Right. And we don't want them to think that we would do anything different for y'all that we would do for them. They're who got us here. They're who gonna, are going to continue to get us where we're going. They're the ones who are going to continue to write into media, who tell people who we are, who tell the right person that they don't even know they're telling this person, who tells this person, whatever, right. who find out about us. And they, you know, the same with y'all. I mean, y'all found us from somebody. Yeah. So <laughs> it's the same thing. You know, it's uh, everybody's got to be just as important as the next person, no matter who they are. Yeah, I think, uh, and what based on what you just said and what also your husband said, Will, is that, you know, if I don't like this brisket that's going in the trash can, first of all, I want to buy you trash cans with my name on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. He's but, like, I'm done with this. <laughs> that's right. But your kids are going to eat, too. So They'll always eat. That's, yeah. that's why they're over barbecue, somebody, right? They're done with somebody it. Somebody eats it. The trash can is typically the, the, the guys at the restaurant. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but it also speaks, you know, volumes and loudly to the integrity of the restaurant itself, which is run by the people, right? A church is not a church without its people. Right. A restaurant is not a restaurant without its people. Right. And that integrity is, is speaks volumes to if I can't eat it, if I can't serve it, I'm not it's going away. Mm-hmm. Right. So that will get you much further than turn around and open one up to do a hand select, hand cut for a special name on a ticket because right. then they get the, the truest representation of what you know, Will and Nicole are all about, that's right. and that's putting out the best possible product. So, I mean, that I think you'll be wildly successful for years and years and years to come with that same principle, which is, um, you know, and I I know some other restaurants that don't do that. Mm-hmm. Meaning, now they may chop it up and use it for something else, sure. right? Yeah, but yeah. Um, totally fine. they're the first ones <laughs> to say, "No, nah, that was not good enough. Put it back in the warmer. We'll use it for something sure. else." Whereas you're like, "Ah, it's going out." Well, yeah. you know, and if you can repurpose it for something, else, of course, I would absolutely highly recommend that than throwing food in the garbage <laughs> can, right? So, like, like I said, I can help you. I can help you. Speech, you know, <laughs> we're, we're not just wasting food over there. No, no, no. Of course not. Um, I would, you know, we would, we would much rather give that food to somebody who needed that food yeah. and, and and could care less who the hell we are uh, or what our brisket looks like that day that just needs food to eat. Yeah, but to uh, this, but to my own, <laughs> but my only my real point in that was not to so much settle on that word but but right. the yeah. standard the standard that absolutely. you set for yourself and your business yeah. you know yeah yeah absolutely well it's not just what's coming out of the pit it's what y'all are bringing in to the pit beforehand you know right. the the quality of meat that you're doing and then the the care we talked about it kind of off camera sorry guys but uh, we talked about you know your your passion for what type of meat you're going to use. Do you mind explaining that to our listeners a little bit? You know, uh, it's it's really huge, um, especially how our daughter being a vegetarian. I know it's <laughs> crazy, but um, years ago I made a decision that as much as we put out, I wanted to be we wanted to be responsible for what we were doing and getting animals that are treated correctly and doing the you know so called circle of life is great. You know, I mean, animal hunts animals, so on and so on. 
Uh, but I want it to be right. Mm. I don't want to think that our animals spent all their times in a pen, locked up, you know, treated horribly, killed horribly. I want to know that ours are raised on a farm, living their best life, mm-hmm. um, treated correctly. You know, people touch them and give them acknowledgement as being, you know, you have they have, they have blood running through them and heartbeats. Right. And respecting the animal. Absolutely. Respecting the animal is fruit of the earth. You know, it's not something that needs to be just consumed. You do it for your, your yeah. pets at home. It's kind of the same thing. We don't, we're not eating our pets at home. You know, <laughs> right. Like you don't, I don't understand. Just caring for the animal. You care for the animal. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you wouldn't do that to your own pet. You, you're not going to mistreat them like that. And so we want to make sure that we are kind of, we're buying the same thing that, it's not a commodity. It's a very humanely, you know, thought process, right? Very humane thought right. process. But I will tell you that uh, even if you're, let's say you're a human being, but you're not humane towards animals, meaning right. you don't care where the meat comes from, you just want it to taste good. Right. There is a huge difference between uh, humanely treating an animal and then harvesting that animal Absolutely. and then mistreating an animal and harvesting that animal. Right. The pH that jumps through an animal's blood and muscles, and it becomes fibrous and tough and it's, it's not nearly going to be as tender or, um, the adrenaline yeah, or absolutely. So, so difference. regardless of whether you want to be kind of the animal or not, you get a better product treating an animal humanely and harvesting that animal in the right possible way, the right exactly. conditions. And again, I think that comes down to our responsibility. So the way, from our perspective, this is one of the reasons why we did it, yeah. is, is because we, we feel like we had a sense of responsibility. The takeaway from it is that it also is just fantastic and yeah. it represents well. Yeah, right. Uh, or represents <laughs> well. So <laughs> everybody wins and the customer doesn't necessarily need to know That's why right. we do what we do. Yep. All they know is that, wow, that tastes amazing. Yeah, exactly. And, and if, if they care to know, well, this is why. Yeah, that's cool. And I've had people ask me, you know, I've heard you do Creekstone. I've read about Creekstone. So, yeah. Or I've heard you do um, Compart. You know, why do you do, you know, Compart and blah, blah, blah. You mm-hmm. know, I wrote an email to Jim. And I wrote him an email and told him how important it was for me to have these types of meats and how and for these to be treated. And he sent me photos, invited us to come see him, invited nice. us to come see the farm. You know, if my heart was unsettled, you know, this is what we do, blah, blah, blah. And and I wrote and I hung that email up in our dining room oh, in cool. the line so people could read it along with Creekstone. And I have some other ones I just haven't gotten up for other animals. But yeah, yeah it's huge. There's not, you know, it doesn't just end up in the grocery store. That's what people need to know. Right, it doesn't right. just end up in the grocery store. Yeah. It comes from somewhere. And so yeah. you're buying commodity meats. You need to find out where these animals are coming from. And when we can get people to start buying meats that are not that are treated humanely, then we will start the prices will start coming down yeah. because they won't have to compete with commodity meats. Right. With animals who are treated horribly. And we'll get rid of all of that, and we'll start having more farm raised again. We'll go back to what we used to be, mm-hmm. and we will start seeing those prices come down. And then everybody will get to eat farm raised meats as we should be, and it'll be a happy ending story. Yeah, it's it, it's it's just hard to be not necessarily ahead of that curve, but part of that front part of the part curve. Part of the learning curve, and especially stuff. someone that is since because the accolades have come out such a forefront and such a visual representation of it in that people will say oh well why is their brisket so expensive oh it's because they got written up on texas monthly or, da, 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 or because they're so popular da, da. it's like no no you don't freaking understand you know um hey, one of the most telling soft music inside that room with it costs a lot of money it does. <laughs> and the massages. I mean, yeah. you know, they wash the, their hand the wash. The champagne <laughs> bath. Champagne baths. Yeah. Popping, popping tops. Yeah. <laughs> We're for this. You go to be Kobe beef in Japan. That's you know, that's what you do. <laughs> um, sorry, I lost my train. Man, I'm sorry. No, no, no. no, 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 no it's perfect, man. It's perfect. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so one, I, I applaud that. I applaud that, that that was an, an initial, you know, ground rule that you set for yourself when you were cooking one brisket at a time and, and trying to figure things out to, to you're still standing by it. Um, I hope customers, you know, through listening to this or, you know, through anything that we share, start to recognize that because this is the same, not the same conversation, but it's a similar conversation that we've had with other pit masters that we, we, we've had with Willett from Burger Chan, where he was like, look, you know, he, he was talking to me about the strawberry milkshake. He only does it when it's in season. There's only a certain amount that he can make. Right. 
And when it's out, it's out. I got the very first one, and I got the second to last one. Will it got the last one? I'm, oh, right? I'm mad at you, Will it? Where's the camera? I'm mad at you, man. I saw your post on Instagram. I'm coming for you. But yeah, I might. <laughs> um, but. Uh, I, I'm hoping that the more and more that we can talk about it, the more and more it hits people's ears, the more and more that they understand it. And like you said, eventually we can get more back yeah. to it, you know, and the prices will drop for everybody, for the customer, for y'all, you know, because food prices have gone up. Food prices have gone up and they've done it in an unsustainable way where we are destroying things on this planet, you know, and um, not to get all preachy or get on my, on my soapbox or whatnot, but yeah. establishments that can do this, one, please try, please try, and two, please support. You know, um, every I think every establishment wants to try and do the right thing. There are some barriers and so forth that they can't. There are barriers, and we can't do it with everything. You know, we've tried it with the vegetables, and that's almost been impossible. And you know, so we get it with this vegetable, but not that vegetable. You know, because we have to have coleslaw all the time, so I can get. Sometimes I can get it. You know, organic. Sometimes you can't. You know? Right. You know, so I think it just comes down to doing the best you can. Mm -hmm. I don't think every restaurant's going to be able to do every single thing perfect. Nobody right. can. That's just part of life. Right. But I think if we can all try to do somewhat our part, including personally, you know, in your own homes, mm -hmm. of, of trying to do those things more yep. responsible, I think it helps everybody in the long run. I agree. Like, really, really does. So how does your daughter being a vegetarian <clears throat> play into the business? And what I mean by that is obviously, you know, uh, you take care of her. She's well taken care of. Yes. Does that translate into the business? And do you offer those types of dishes and center the plate items and gluten-free i mean all the we buzzwords do. like gluten-free sure do yeah. okay good we have something for everybody at the restaurant and uh, uh really to my behest it, it, first when we started when we were building menus and doing this i was like why are we putting a salad on this menu <laughs> <laughs> it was a salad it was a spinach salad you know it was like a very protein centric joint right uh, and, and with and a spinach salad and, and strawberries argued, and argued, and argued <laughs> over it and and she won and i can see like it's a it's a huge success uh people love that we have a lot of people you know we're a lunchtime place we have a lot of corporate folks business okay. folks coming to, the, to, to to our establishment uh, and it's a mixed group of people you mm -hmm. know people at the office grab you we're going to lunch you want to come with us yeah let's go we've got something on the menu for everybody there yeah and we've tried we're doing more and more things i have more and more things in mind for that kind of stuff but you know it's huge for us uh we eat really healthy outside of it so having not just an iceberg salad was big to me because you know it's water yeah it's <laughs> huge and um i was like well that's you're actually getting something if you're eating a spinach salad so right. we want to put more nutrients some value in it right some value in it and you know having different things and different vegetables and cut things and I'm, I'm picky on those things and yeah with our daughter she's uh, been vegetarian for two years but her and I have always worked very hard on having things very specific mm -hmm. and um, so now I work for her also to do those things very specific to have different items my sister is a vegan um, so I try to I try to tune into those things with people who are vegan. Right? We don't have a lot, but we have things. You know, right. We have stuff for them. Right. And um, it's, I mean, it's a barbecue restaurant. Sure. You know, if you're like super vegan, <laughs> animal rights wise, you're not going to step foot in our door. You probably want to go somewhere else. <laughs> we try. We try hard. But we, we try don't. hard. <laughs> yeah. I explained to some vegans, you know, and also we're at Texas Monthly who were screaming and yelling at us. You know, I tried to explain to them as one was carrying a leather purse. Yeah. Uh, all, Clearly, she gets it. You know, <laughs> so you know, but I explained to her. I was like, "Look, you know, we're do it's circle of life." Like I said earlier, yeah. you know, that's this is part of it. It's about being responsible. Yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. I got yelled at for it, anyways. But no. it's all about, I, like, our tell her daughter. Th this is what we do. Yeah. And she's understanding. She doesn't sure. get mad at us. She, she's never like me. So she's that's this isn't like a. It's not a protest thing, thing, you know. Right, right. When she stopped eating oh, meat, we were, we were not surprised. I hope she does That would be hard. That would pull at your heartstrings. She doesn't put anything in people's faces. It's just her thing. Yeah. I get it. She's just like, no, she's my thing. I think what's, you know, what's cool is that while you are barbecue-centric, right, you still you still have other guests. You still have people at the office who say, hey, you want to come with us? Yeah. Yeah, I can't go. They don't have anything. Or I'm going to go over here and grab a salad. Well, they have yeah. a salad? Yeah. 
So you, you gotta have I one. Forgot to sell it now. <laughs> you gotta have the one or two items on there that people can accept yeah, and say, "Yeah, I'm gonna do that." Or, or if they decide, do y'all do fish during Lent or anything? Do y'all try to smoke we, anything? We've tried to, but it goes through so fast that we never get to it. Yeah, I've okay. always had great good intentions. Hey, you got the next ten years. Yeah. You got the next yeah, decade. Yeah, we got it. We'll get there. One of these, one of these days, we'll get it. It's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should call them saints or, you know, they're helping people to be responsible. No, yeah, saints. <laughs> <laughs> you can have my vote, but, I mean, you, you may need more to get in. Trust me. I'll tell you. <laughs> my opinion doesn't matter much right now out there, I'm sure. <laughs> well, speaking of moving forward and, and, yeah. and the next 10 years or something like that. Now, I, I mentioned that it's crazy that you touch every piece of meat. Yeah. To me, it doesn't seem sustainable long run. Of course. Um, is that something that you struggle with? Is that something like... I wouldn't say struggle yet, uh, but I, I think it's, you know, it is something that the future holds. The struggle will be, will, will arise. And, mm -hmm. it, and it's something that I know, it's ever present in my mind. I know it's something that I need to work on. I'm not ready to give it up. Mm -hmm. um, the restaurant needs to be more sustainable without Will and Nicole. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to have to be one day or, or we just going to have to find something else to do. Um, <laughs> We've got a really great crew. I'm, I'm, I'm letting more go than I ever have. Um, and I'm, I'm training people better than I ever have. I'm trying to really cultivate people these days rather than just point. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're getting there. We, uh, the future holds great things for Will and Nicole, holds great things for Corkscrew Barbecue, um, uh, but we need to be able to be in other places to, to achieve these goals that we yeah. have. So yes, it's, so, it's on our minds. Okay, and I think um, one of the things that I've seen is um, you and Chef Austin are, are relatively close. Very close. Is he somebody that you've been able to kind of bounce ideas off of, or you know, kind of get some? I, I wouldn't say bounce ideas off of. Um, he's uh, as far as uh, in the culinary field, so far ahead of me um, that it's it's more like sponge off of okay there you go yeah i'm learning so much from that guy he's, he's so politically correct too. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's so saints pol political saints sorry well spoken we'll say well spoken. <laughs> he, he he's he's a fantastic person uh i i've, I've we've done projects together mm -hmm. um which i passed yesterday yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I did not see a post about y'all no, doing something no, you yesterday. Know it's yesterday. making me. It's hilarious. Oh, okay. So they were going to. Um, Birthright Barbecue Fest in Dallas. Yeah. We oh, yeah. Way on their way. So he, so Austin picks him up. Austin and him have become really good friends cool. also. So he picks Will up at 1230 yesterday. And Father's Day, he asked me, he's like, do you. I was like, well, that barbecue fest that he wants me to go to with him is on Father's Day. What do you think? He's like, I'm gonna tell him no. And I was like, why? And he's like, well, it's Father's Day. And I was like, oh my God, babe, go. The kids will be fine. It's like one Sunday of, you're you're always here with us. It's not a big deal. Are you sure? Just go. Just y'all have fun. Y'all enjoy, like, have guy time. He doesn't get guy time. I absorb all of his time. Honestly, <laughs> I am insanely needy when it comes to him. Obviously, we work together. I like this at all times. Um, so he goes, 1230. I take my kids to my mom's. She wants him to spend the night. And I was like, Okay, yeah, the dogs are my mom's, kids are at my mom's. Now what do you do? Yeah. So I'm like, well, I okay, shit. So I go home. <laughs> it's 4.30-ish. I make a margarita, turn on a movie, sitting outside. And I was like, well, I got my laptop, margarita, movie. And I'm like, I'm going to shop all night. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to drink margaritas. I'm going to shop, and I'm going to watch TV. I get a text from them, and I'm like, oh, sweet, they're there. Okay. Hey, babe. There's tornadoes touching down. We're on our way back. I was like, what the f***? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're on your way back. Right. I would have been like, hotel bar. Like, you know, we're going back to the hotel. Right. We're going to drink the hotel bar all night. Right. <laughs> Chill out. They got there. Show me the pic. They turn around. He's like, pick somewhere to go eat supper. We're on our way back, you know. And oh. I was like, well, <laughs> shit. I'm going to finish my margarita. I'll finish my movie. I got three and a half hours right, right. to get back. They get back home and they show me the picture and it was jet black. They showed the picture in front of them yeah. in Dallas and it was Jeez. tornadoes touching down. Yeah, we were driving into something fierce. Um, I, the f festivals uh, didn't end up getting canceled. Uh, did they, not? No, it did not. They ended up having a good time. I don't know how they pulled it off. Wow. Um, good for them. 
Patrick and Aaron Fee just were out there, yeah. so we were going to go out there and kind of. We didn't tell anybody we were coming. Um, <laughs> Uh, Hard brand beef is a is a uh, chef Austin uses a lot of their products yeah. and is really good friends with the family. Um, they were sponsoring the event, um, so we were going to go out and, and surprise everybody and, and taste all the treats that they were all making. Um, so we were keeping con- contact with them on our way out there, uh, and and they were like holed up in a in a bank. Yeah, the I saw they so were bad. sheltered in place. Yeah, yeah. sheltered that. in place. I mean, uh, Patrick was posting pictures all through the night, like 2.30 in the morning, it was raining, 4.30 in the morning, it was raining. Mm-hmm. This was all live fire cook stuff. Mm. Yeah, yeah, cause he did, I think he did like his whole hog kind of yeah, set up again. I was like, like come on, just one time can he have a cook without uh, the weather I'm not serious. cooperating, you know? <laughs> give, give the hogs a break for a minute. <laughs> 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 Something's going on in your life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's, what's happening now, but. He's had poor luck the last few cooks, uh, for sure. Uh, Aaron Franklin was out there doing like a whole side of beef in a brick pit. Um, uh, there, there was a lot of cool stuff going on out there. Uh, so we, we were really kind of disappointed that I we bet. were driving into this. And, well, I'll, I'll never, I'll never uh, pass that up for I'll sure. Like, hey, <laughs> well, you know, in order to get to the hotel, we still had to drive farther into the storm. You know, yeah. we, were, we were on the very sa- southern edge of Dallas when when we saw this and, and turned on AM radio and started listening to the weather reports. And uh, from from where we were sitting, it didn't look like the festival was going to happen, so we just called it mm-hmm. and headed back home. And so. make the executive decision. So they had, I they had seven hours. Seven hours on the road with Chef Austin yesterday. <laughs> we didn't accomplish anything, but we had great conversation. That's uh, good. Always enjoy hanging out with him. And uh, uh, we're working on things in the future. Hopefully, you know, him and I can come together at more festivals and, and collaborate. Um, we're already talking about maybe doing another collaborative collaborative dinner at Tris. Okay, with uh, his collaborate uh, series yeah, that he the, does. Those those, those are huge. For, for we did one already. We yeah, done two, so. you've done two. Yeah, yeah we started the collaborate. We started the season of collaborate. Yeah, we did this season. We started it, uh, at, but and every time it's been a great showing. I mean, it's, him. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is yeah. uh, uh, between him and I. It's it's uh, harmony. It's some kind of bromance, man. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm surprised you didn't take him out on a date. <laughs> His palate and my palate and and our our our, our foods just combine seamlessly every single time Thank so it's, it's 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 a beautiful thing so you know it's something that we'd like to continue to work on and, and cultivate together um and see what happens you know right nothing, nothing on the books just, we, uh, we'd love to be a part of that process we're yeah. having him on next week yeah yes. and uh yeah. we're really excited to have him as well you know, just like with you guys so he's a great guy he's way smarter than me um and and i and, doubt it uh, he really is i mean his is uh his food knowledge is beyond it's crazy. Anybody that I know. It's crazy. Uh, he's a lot younger than I thought he was with you know, the level of success that he's had. It's incredible. And, 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 the, and the length yeah. of time that he's been at this location that he's at, mm-hmm. this uh, group that he's with, uh, he, he started, I mean, he took an executive position at a very young age. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you see where he's at now. I mean, but he's also, it's kind of like what you talked about too, was when we, when we saw you two uh, working together at the Houston Barbecue Festival, it wasn't, you know, like chef versus chef on one dish or something, or like, hey, you do this, I do this. Everything complements it, not just, I mean, the way he interacted with your staff as well was like, hey, look, he just fit right in. And my my restaurant background, there's not too many chefs that are like that. We've met a lot of those guys in the barbecue community for sure. Um, but it was it was really cool to kind of see that, that collaboration come to fruition and be so f- good too because it was it was was it the beef tongue or beef t- it was beef tongue right that y'all did beef tongue uh, yeah and then it was the yeah yeah they work together they have just this chemistry i'm telling you they like he said the, the bromance it's other the it's less the romance it's more of a romance of food yeah no it's not it's it exactly what it yeah. is. <laughs> do you, so you probably so do you envision more collaborations, whether it be with with Chef Austin or other. Absolutely, I think uh, we, and, we've been. Uh, uh, we of course, uh, Houston Barbecue uh, does you know the Houston Barbecue Festival. They do the the throwdowns at Santa mm-hmm. Brewery. Um, we've always been invited to do those, but we've been invited to do that with Chef Austin this okay. year for the for the throwdown. Cool. And I think we're going to take him up on it. Good, good, um, good. That'll be exciting. Yeah, so we definitely have more things to come. 
Um, and again, like I said, we've talked about doing another collaborate dinner. I, most of the time on the collaborate dinners, he'll, he'll, you know, it's a tasting menu. He'll do uh, four or five dishes and then his guest will do four or five dishes right. and it'll just be, you know, one after the other. Uh, whereas is, at our collaborates, it's every single dish has a smoked element. Uh, we work together on every single dish and fine tune the Whether entire menu smoked together. Smoked fruits or smoked yeah, fish yeah, dessert, dessert everything. There's all kinds of stuff. Well, that's all really smoked. cool. Pass apps all the way to dessert. I mean, everything has a smoked element to so it. So that that continues to add tools to the tool belt, right? Absolutely. Those experience and interaction. Sure. Any any thoughts of another restaurant, another location? You know, not or not, a different concept for that I, matter. I think I think maybe they're. <laughs> not <corkscrew. laughs> Nicole is like biting her tongue, uh, and you're yeah, dancing yeah. all around it, which tells me something good is coming. Well, you know, we we're, 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 we're not. I can tell you this Mom's much: we're, we're not going to open a second corkscrew no. barbecue. Okay. Um, I don't want to dilute what we have. Sure. Um, and I and I kind of feel that that kind can sometimes happen. Not all the time, not yeah. every instance, but if you know, I am so heavily involved in it. Um, I really have a lot of work to do to yep. get that restaurant itself self-sufficient without Will and Nicole involved in it um, at the capacity that we are in now. Yeah. Uh, so a second location of Corkscrew is, is not in the works, I can tell you that much. Okay. Uh, we've been offered, that's another, you know, earlier I touched on the fact that we kind of ride between bumpers. Uh, you know, we've had investors come to us. We've had uh, very wealthy people from Dubai come to us. We've had uh, all kinds of opportunities to take Corkscrew to uh, amazing levels. And every single one of them. It's a huge compliment. Uh, it is. Yeah. And, and we take it just as that. And, and we respectfully decline. Uh, every single one of them. This is we have a very clear vision of what Corkscrew is, what it what it has been, and what it's going to be, uh, and and nothing can us from that course. But we are open to other ideas and other concepts. If there's a way that we can get Corkscrew on its own two feet, uh, of course we're going to continue on with our careers. Yeah. Uh, and 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 build more. I would love uh, Corkscrew the brand to be a uh, uh, group, not just a single. One. So with all that, all the success you've had, right? There's some people along the way have helped. There's some people for the right or wrong reason, right? Some people yeah. have helped you by motivating you and some people have encouraged you. Anybody you want to give a shout out to? Anybody you want to say thank you to? I mean, your grandma obviously is one of them, right? She yeah, gave you the extra push. Definitely is. I, I think uh, my mom, my dad, his parents. I mean, so family, obviously. Our, yeah. All of our family. Family all for of our sure. friends. I mean, our friend. Like we were kind of floored by everybody, everybody being so supportive, mm -hmm. and and all of our friends came to everything. You know, they any events that we had or any like we would just go to. You know this one thing was having like a chili cook-off but they wanted to have food there too and we went there and it was a total bus and we didn't sell anything mm -hmm. and they all showed up and bought all kinds of food and like oh. all of our friends they and they all know who they are they all I can't, i'm not going to name anybody because i know all the you'll get in them. trouble that's why you'll get in trouble and uh <clears throat> they supported us his brother um our sister-in-law like they I don't think any of them ever were doubting us. They all were just like, we're by your side. It gives you the confidence they to push. They worked for us. Our, our neighbor across the street, Preston, who you know was 16 at the time, who's now a state trooper, you know, he came and he worked for us anytime we needed him. And anytime oh. we needed Every him. summer, every spring break, in, any in event college, we had in to high do, school, we have money, we paid him a beer. You know, That's cool. When you can pay guys in beer. When he, when he was yeah, or <laughs> brisket. <laughs> beer or brisket, right. Of course. <laughs> and, uh, all names have been changed to protect the innocent. never took part in that. <laughs> it was market research. Market it was market research. research. We're talking to the saints here. They can't lie. You know? And, uh, you know, so. But Creekstone, you know, Creekstone being a good supplier of meats, and, and you guys obviously agree. I mean, you, you know, like yeah, you like what they do for you. Every, and Everybody that we've partnered meats. with, you know, they, they also have a tremendous responsibility, and they recognize sure. it, and that's why we do business with them. So, yeah, to the Creekstone Farms, to the Comparts, to, to everybody that goes above what they necessarily have to do, to sell the product that they're selling, uh, kudos to you. That's why I mean. That's why we're in bed with you. Sure. That's why we're doing what we do. Um, to but our you, kids. Yeah, to our kids. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> supporting us as well. You know, and all the accolades that we get. You know, they think we're the coolest people in the world. Which, if you have kids, know that that's incredibly hard, to do, <laughs> and it doesn't last forever. So, right. you know, the fact that they look up to us now, uh, in the years that their brains are developing, is a fantastic thing. Um, to my mom. I think that's huge for her. Her, her mom's a, a she huge factor. She does everything, business. anything time we need stuff for the kids, anytime that she need, we need her to get them from this or get them from that. She does all of our accounting. She does so much for us. 
I, I don't know that we could, we definitely could not survive. So it's a family affair, obviously. It, it, it definitely is. Yeah. And, and uh, there's there's uh, two people that were in my life that I was in a barbecue restaurant when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know, it, they didn't teach me anything really about barbecue, but they taught me <laughs> everything I needed to know about life. So at a time in my life where I was not respecting authority very well, I would not listen to my parents who could have taught me all the same lessons in life. But for whatever reason, Wayne and Charlotte Reed, uh, who are no longer with us, um, man, they really took me to a different place in life. That's cool. That was Reed's Barbecue, correct? Yeah. 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 Which is down the street from where our new we're close to. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, so it's, it was huge. It's well, and everybody place. has that hand up at some point, right? Yeah, Whether it be barbecue or life or... You know, just that it takes that person, those people that actually believe in you yeah. as, a, as a human being. Yeah. That you're worth more than this. You can accomplish so much great things. They see it in you, even though you may they not see it. They see it in you. Yeah. And, and they push you to be greater than what you are. That's cool. And those are the folks that did it for me. Cool. But holy cow, what a, this has been an absolute great journey. Awesome journey, yeah. awesome podcast. I hope people have a lot to take away from this. I, I don't even think we asked what type of wood you use or how long you smoke it, you know, or anything like that. Rookie. Screw that. You know? Like, no, nah, just get out there. And, try it. Um, and so the, 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 that's, you know, it, it's also, it's awesome that y'all came on here. You guys have every freaking publication i bet reaching out to you um i also think chef austin only said that he'd come on our podcast after we said we got y'all on I mean, so. <laughs> he didn't say that but he may have indicated yeah, you know, like, if you yeah. can get them you can get me yeah something like that so for uh, those who aren't aware or, or under a rock or haven't paid attention where can they find you where are you located we're in old town spring we're at two, yeah two six 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 zero eight Keith Street, zero. Spring, Texas, 77373. And on social media? Instagram? At corkscrew BBQ. Okay. On Instagram, not on Facebook. Oh, no, it's on Facebook. You're on Facebook We're on as Facebook, well. Facebook, Twitter, yeah. Instagram, LinkedIn. Any any of those, you know, search Corkscrew BBQ, you're going to find us. And website? CorkscrewBBQ.com. Hours of operation. We're open Tuesday through Saturday. We open at 11. <laughs> yep. Until sold and out. Until sold out, which is average time, 3.30, 4 o'clock. Why don't you make more brisket? I'm just <laughs> kidding. Uh, let's go into that real quick. So I'll just, hey, I'll just read me. I'll just, quick when you go. I'll just read, I'll just read me on the website. Read me. Well, listen, thank Oh, we're hiring. <laughs> oh, and they're hiring too. They're hiring. Hey, I'm about to put in a freaking application. Just, 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 uh, you guys thanked us, but thank you. We, thank we you. Really You're appreciate welcome. The opportunity to be on Super the show. Excited. It's our pleasure. And, uh, uh, happy we can make it out. Well, we know how busy you are, and we've played phone tag, and we've made yeah. appointment changes, and so yeah. we're just happy you're here, and we we, yeah. we feel blessed, and uh, Likewise. we will continue to follow you and promote you and help you in every way we can. Yeah. So, thank you, folks. Thank you for attending. Appreciate you got anything else? Oh, just again, I always say it, and I always get long-winded saying thank you. But <laughs> yeah. uh, every time we do a podcast like just this, hug I, I'll hug them. I want to <laughs> hug every single one of my listeners. I want to hug our our sponsors, uh, everybody who supported us. Um, all I can ask is if you could just, you know, like and subscribe. You know, um, give us a follow, shoot us any comments, anything like that to help us grow this podcast. Every single like and follow helps us with our sponsorships and so forth. Um, this has been an incredible journey. Uh, I am. Thankful for you, Darren Lafferty, for oh, helping shucks. me get to where I am um, with this podcast. Uh, I never thought that I would have, you know, you, you know, Corkscrew Barbecue, all of these great guys on. I mean, you know, everybody, Fijis, all these guys who are, you know, Texas Monthly type of guys. Yeah, yeah, the guys yeah. who, like I said, have <laughs> publications constantly hounding them for y'all to say, hey, you know what? We're, we're going to come on and, and sit here and, and talk to a microphone and talk to your dumbass ass Connor. Sure. You know, yeah, so... <laughs> Very blessed. So, um, like I said before, thank you to everybody. Uh, like and subscribe. <laughs> and, and I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I, uh, thank you, Duke. Start tearing up. Duke's Premium Meats and uh, Beavers HTX. Thank and, you, Beavers. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate so it. that's that's the close of uh, episode three and uh, or part, part three, three of uh, Corkscrew. Join us for the next one. We'll be back soon. Thank you. Thank Adios. you. Thanks, guys.